It's a hot sun. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Sunshine. This is a kind of a peculiar movie, but it's because I'm a big fan of Danny Boyle and I haven't seen the film in a while. If I were to describe this in two words, flawed masterpiece. Pretty big saying for it, so I'll explain what it is. This film follows the crew of a ship called the Icarus II. What has happened is that the core of the sun has stopped. It has cooled down to a point where Earth is going into a solar winter. Their mission is to try and reignite the sun with a bomb that is the size of the cubic size of Manhattan. They also are the second mission because the first one just disappeared and they don't know what happened. They are the last chance they have of saving the Earth. The bond that they carry is the last of the raw materials. And as kind of similar to that really stupid movie, The Core, as this sounds, I can assure you it is not that stupid. Till the end. The film is a visual delight. The space scenes look amazing. The ship scenes look amazing. Danny Boyle put a lot of effort into making this film. He actually, in fact, put so much effort into it, both with obviously directing it, but in the post, he was working extensively with the visual effects team, who I believe are double negative. The guys who went on to make Interstellar do the visual effects for that film. Apparently, because it was such a rigorous regime for him that he swore he would never do a sci-fi film again, which is unfortunate because this is one of my favorite sci-fi films ever. The cast is actually really good in this film. We've got a big bunch of actors, including Killian Murphy, Chris Evans before he was Captain America, Michelle Yeoh, Rose Bryan, and they're all actually really good characters. And on top of that, on top of that, something that's a usual thing with these sci-fi films is something bad happens because of stupidity. And it doesn't actually happen in this film. The thing that really starts the shit storm to start rolling is when they make a course change. There is a factor of it that actually makes sense as to why the mistake is made considering it's just one guy because at this point they actually don't have any more communication with NASA. They were on their own so it's just him to make the decision. And it could happen. And that's how I feel it is for most of this film. We're not only getting a visual show, we are getting a psychological film. We are seeing the effects that such a evident and important and literal life creating source the sun is. We see people have aversions to it. We see people have nightmares about it. We see people become addicted to looking at the sun. The psychologist character becomes addicted to looking at the sun to the point where he's getting sunburns. There's a psychological aspect of this film which I feel is not talked about enough because it is one of the greatest parts of the film. This delving into these characters, just basic things of what would be going through your mind if you were on this mission, if you were given such an absolutely bananas crazy task. And they handle it in a very understandable way, not just from the actors and just their own emotions, but also the narrative. Because when you think about it, it's a cuckoo ludicrous plot, but it's still pretty good. And that's because it's written by Alex Garland, who would go on to direct Ex Machina, he would go on to direct Annihilation. The dude's killing it right now with sci-fi. They also had Brian Cox, a pretty well-known astrophysicist. I think he's even been on Joe Rogan. He actually came in and gave them a lot of tips, a lot of information about it. He even provided a commentary for the film talking about all the science aspects. And it's one of my favorite commentaries I've ever listened to. It's very, very good. If you own the film or you have access to that commentary, I would definitely suggest you watch it. Also, the music. The music so good. The band Underworld and John Murphy, the composer, just made a delicious blend of music. Just a fantastic soundtrack that is not available at all for physical sale. And the film came out in 2007. There's a big legal issue between the band Underworld and 20th Century Fox, and apparently they have still not solved this shit. But, as I said, there is something that's kind of silly kind of stupid. It happens in the latter third of the film and it changes the film aspect from a psychological in-depth voyage in space to kind of a slasher but it's still trying to keep that element of psychological trippiness into it especially with how they shoot these scenes it's a part that really disjoints people it's a part that makes a lot of people walk out of the room and i can understand why it's a lot to accept and if you can't completely understand because it is kind of bananas. I enjoy this idea because it talks about more of the ideas of faith 
humanity, their weaknesses, the totality of addictions and madness. But it's still a very, very entertaining film from beginning to end. The space scenes are great, the music's great, the characters are great, the attention to detail is astounding, and I do love how it ends. I love it from a visual perspective, I love it from a narrative perspective. But again, I can understand why people don't enjoy it when it gets to this point in the film, because it's asking a lot. In the end, I'm gonna give Sunshine a six out of seven. This is one of my favorite films of all time. It's one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time. It has a lot of ups and it has one kind of very perplexing down, but I still say it is a must-see film. I don't know if it's on any streaming service right now, but I would definitely suggest watching it. I really need to get the Blu-ray. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.